Good morning. I hope you're ready for a story. I have found an old one. It's a jack tale. It's Jack and the Giant Chaser. It's an Appalachian tale and it's written by Ken and Joanne Compton. Jack tales are stories that were told from grandparent to grandparent to grandchild and passed on down through the centuries. Usually they weren't in books, they were just stories. But somebody took those stories and put them into a book. So that's what I'm going to read you today is a Jack tale. Hope you enjoy it. One sunny day, Jack was returning home after running off some highway robbers. As he ambled down the road by the creek, minding his own business, he spied seven catfish swimming along the bank. Jack was feeling hungry, so he leaned over and he picked up a smooth rock and he heaved it at those catfish. Wouldn't you know, one rock hit all seven and killed them dead. Jack cleaned them, cooked them, and had them for his fine dinner. He killed them fish with one rock. After he had eaten, Jack traveled on and traveled on until he came to his hometown. There he noticed most of his neighbors and kinfolks were gathered in front of the general store. Jack walked up to them and announced, I'm back! Nobody paid any attention, so he said it just a little bit louder this time. Yep, I had me a fine adventure! When the town folks continued to ignore him, he hollered, I just killed me seven with one blow. Well, that got the folks' attention. Suddenly, everybody crowded around Jack. Seven with one blow, they exclaimed. The town folk made such a fuss that Jack didn't have the heart to tell them it was only seven catfish that he had killed. Finally, the mayor got everybody to quiet down so he could make a speech. He called Jack up to the steps of the store and said, Jack, ever since you've been gone, we've been nothing but trouble. Seems this mean old giant's been taken up living up on Belsom Mountain. He didn't take too kindly to us down here. Last week, he came off that mountain and stole three of my best milk cows, shouted Old Man Ward. He stomped my cornfield and ruined half my rhubarb, too, yelled Cousin Homer. You ought to see he pushed over my barn, exclaimed Miss Josephine. None of us has had any peace for weeks. The mayor hooked his arm around Jack's shoulder and declared, What we need is a giant chaser. I believe you are just the one for the job. With that, Jack's neighbors and kinfolks hopped, hooped and hollered and slapped poor old Jack on the back. Jack was so sure he was cut out for the deal with the giant since everybody thought he was a hero. He figured he'd have to try and act like one. So Jack's going to try to act like a hero. The next morning, Jack got up bright and early and set off for Balsam Mountain to find that giant. When he got up there, the giant wasn't home. So Jack set himself down as bold as you please on the front porch and waited for him. Wasn't long before the giant appeared over the ridge carrying Mrs. Palmer's two prize pigs, one in each hand. Look at them little bitty pigs he's got. Howdy, said Jack. Howdy yourself, replied the giant as he set down the pigs. What you doing sitting on my front porch, little man? I'm hunting a giant. You seen one around here? Ha! 
seen one. Don't you know I am one? Jack looked at the giant over and said, I don't know. Most of the giants I've seen are a lot bigger than you, but I reckon you're the you're the one I'm aiming to get rid of. Now, was that a smart thing to tell the giant? I don't know. The giant just busted out laughing. What makes you think you're a match for me, little feller? Jack looked surprised. Well, I figured you'd heard of me. I'm Jack, and just yesterday I killed seven with one blow. Seven? Is that a fact? The giant looked surprised. Yep, said Jack. Seven. Of course, I'm kind of a small one in my family. If my daddy was to catch up with you, you'd hate to think what would happen. Well, said the giant, you must be tougher than you look, Jack. Before we commence to fighting, how'd you like to have something to eat? Why, that's right neighborly, said Jack. I reckon I can wait until this afternoon to take care of you. So he's going to have dinner with the giant. Now that old giant aimed to find out just how tough Jack was. So he went inside and got two huge buckets. Let's go down to the creek and fetch some water to cook with Jack, said the giant. Jack knew there was no way he could ever pick up the two buckets, much less lug them up the hill full of water. But he had himself an idea. And when he got to the creek, Jack waded out into the middle and reached down to the bottom. What you doing there, Jack? said the giant. I'm fixing to grab hold of the creek so I can drag it up to your front door. No sense in carrying just one little bit of water up there. Who dare, Jack? You don't want that creek that close to my house. It might flood me out someday. Just you grab one of these buckets and we'll be done. Not me. If I can't carry the creek, I'll not be caught carrying this little bit of water with that. What if my kinfolk saw me? So the giant grabbed up both of the buckets himself and toted them up the hill to the cabin. After he got dinner started, the giant said to Jack, Let's go outside and play some mudgy peg while the greens are cooking. All right to me, said Jack. And they went outside and the giant pulled out his pocket knife and threw it clear across the yard and straight into the ground. You're tired, little man, said he said to Jack. Jack walked over to the knife and the size it up. It was nearly as tall as him himself and probably weighed a hundred and fifty pounds. There's no way I can pull this out of the ground, much less throw it. Jack was thinking to himself and didn't take long. Jack long thought and come up with an idea. Looking out across the valley and the far mountains, Jack hollered, Hey, Uncle! Who you calling Uncle? roared the giant. I ain't your kin. I ain't talking to you. I'm yelling to my uncle who lives in the far side of the mountains. He could use a good knife like this one, so I figured I'd just toss it over to him. Hold on there, Jack. That's my good knife, and I'm not ready to part with it. You just toss it right here in the yard. Well, said Jack, if I can't throw it where I please, I won't throw it at all. What if my kin saw me, and he stomped into the cabin. Did he trick the giant again? I don't know. Let's see. The giant went inside too, and he dished up two plates of cornbread, greens, and ham. Then he and Jack sat down to eat. While they were eating, Jack began cocking his head to one side and glanced out the window. He kept doing it until it started to make 
the giant kind of nervous. What are you looking at? demanded the giant. Nothing, replied Jack. I'm just looking to see what I can see. Well, cut it out. You're starting to rile me. They kept on eating, and all the while, Jack's eyes were glued to the window. Once he muttered out the side of his mouth, Hee-haw! Here they come! What do you see out the window, little man? growled the giant. Oh, it ain't nothing, snickered Jack. But if it, I was you, I'd hurry up and finish my dinner. Now hold on to your horses. First, you better tell me what you spied out that window. Oh, it ain't nothing. I tell you, laughed Jack. Nothing but my daddy and my big brothers and about two dozen of my other kinfolk. Now the giant remembered that Jack said he was the smallest one in his family. And he got his bug-eyed look on his face. <gasps> oh, no! Land sakes! If all them catch up with me at once, I'm as good as dead for sure. You gotta hide me, little man. Jack looked at the giant over and said, Now, why would I want to do that? Oh, please don't let them catch me. I'll leave this valley and you'll never see me again. Well, I don't know. You promised you wouldn't come back. You promised. Oh, I promise. I promise. Jack peered around the room and then told the giant, Quick, jump into my big old barrel over in the corner and I'll do what I can to get shed of them. It took some doing, but after a lot of shoving and squeezing, the giant was finally crammed into the barrel and Jack slammed the lid on it as tight as he could. He fit that giant right into that barrel. And then Jack began making all kinds of commotion in the cabin, pretending like his kinfolks were really there. He turned over chairs, he threw pots and pans around, he dumped drawers on the floor, and all the while he was a hollering and a screeching like twenty men. Then Jack shook the giant's barrel real hard and shouted, He ain't here, I tell ye. There ain't no giants in this cabin. Finally, Jack rolled the barrel to the door and shoved it off the porch. Jack ran after it. It bounced, it bumped all the way down the mountain till smack, it hit a tree. Oh, no. Out crawled the giant. I'm much obliged to you, little man. You saved my life, said the giant, rubbing his bump on his head. Oh, it ain't nothing, said Jack. Now you better hightail it out of here for the boys come looking for you. The giant bolted across the creek over the ridge and past the state line. And that was the last Jack or anybody in those parts ever saw that bothersome creature. Well, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And tune in tomorrow for another one. Have a great day. Bye.